Today, I'd like to tell you the story of a gospel tract, a very unusual tract with a worldwide impact. And I'd like to begin with quoting to you a verse from Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 6. It says, In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. So our responsibility is to sow the seed. It's not to make the seed grow. That's the work of God. But to sow it. And the scripture says, if you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. And this is certainly the story of this gospel tract. The story involves a man named Robert Laidlaw. And I have a book in my library. Uh, It's called The Reason Why. The tract is called, and this is called The Story of the Reason Why. Robert Laidlaw was born in Scotland, and soon after his parents moved to New Zealand. His parents were godly believers in what they called the Open Brethren. And Laidlaw's father, along with another man, had a hardware business. And Robert uh, quit school at 16 and began to work in the hardware business. After a while, he took responsibility to travel for the company, and he would visit farmers all over the scattered regions of New Zealand. And as he would meet them, he would ask them if there were things that they needed that they couldn't find. And uh, discovering um, the Montgomery Ward catalog from America, he decided this would be a good thing if he started a catalog there in New Zealand. And so he did. Uh, Eventually, it was originally called uh, Laidlaw Leeds. (laughs) The Leeds was added to his name, and underneath it said, Others Follow. But uh, this particular business uh, really took off, and uh, eventually he established a wide network of department stores. I think it's the last of the department stores that uh, still was functioning um, in in the land of New Zealand. Became very wealthy, and uh, at an early age, uh, he shifted from giving 10% to 25% to 50%, and eventually most of his income was poured into the work of God. Um, He was one of the founders of what was originally the Postal Sunday School because he realized that these farmers had families in isolated places. And so using the catalog system, he developed Sunday School materials so that they could send them out. And eventually it spread to many countries around the world. Uh, He was eventually awarded the, uh, the CBE, the Uh, commander of the British Empire for his philanthropic work. But uh, anyway, his business grew quite dramatically, and uh, he had been saved early on at the Tory Alexander Gospel Everett. These were Americans. Tory was the preacher. Alexander led the music, and they had come to his town of Dunedin, preached the gospel, and uh, shortly before, he almost drowned. He was caught under a boat in, in a, a gale and just about died. And this made him very serious. Although he had grown up with the gospel, um, he was very serious. And at this Tory Alexander campaign, he put his trust in the Lord. And he, a group of young men, formed a little evangelistic team and began to preach the gospel in the open air and go where they could. Well, his business was growing. He had over 200 employees at this point, and um, Alexander came back for some more gospel meetings. And so he invited him to come to his business, and he closed the store, uh, the warehouse, brought all of his employees together. And uh, he told them at that time, although I've talked to many of you about the Lord, it's very difficult in the business day to find time to explain why I am a Christian, the reason why, uh, to all of you. And so I'm going to write it down in a little paper 
so that each of you may have a copy. When he finished writing this little paper, the reason why, he contacted the printers and said, uh, what would be the cost for 3000 and 5000 And um, he, he realized there was very little difference between the two. And so I, I don't know how I'm going to distribute 5,000 tracts, but I'll go ahead and take the larger amount. And so he distributed them to his employees. But then the, the war broke out, and suddenly many of these New Zealanders were going to the front. They were traveling to Britain and fighting on the side of Great Britain. And so many of them took the reason why with them, and soon it spread. And uh, one couple who ended up serving the Lord in Britain among Belgian um, uh, captives there, uh, they asked if it might be translated into Flemish, and it was. And uh, then another country and another country. And the last stats I have is that over 50 million copies of The Reason Why have been distributed in about 30 different languages. And this book is just chock-a-block with testimonies of people who, who wrote to Laidlaw and told him how God had saved them through that gospel tract. Laidlaw, when he was a relatively young man, he, he was born in 1885, and in 1915 he uh, traveled to the United States. And um, Harry Ironside, well-known preacher, uh, Harry Ironside's mother had died when Harry's sister was just five years old. And the Laidlaw's, um, Robert Laidlaw's aunt and uncle had taken this little girl, Lillian, into their home and raised her as their own daughter. And so Robert then, who had treated her as a, a cousin, so to speak, although there was no blood relation, he met her for the first time when he came to San Francisco for a visit. He wanted to see uh, the big uh, Sears Roebuck and uh, J.C. Penney and so on, all of the big department stores in America. And, uh, and so he, he met his cousin for the first time. She wasn't really his cousin but he was so enamored with this young woman, I think within 14 days they got married. And uh, she returned with him to New Zealand. They had three children, and uh, God greatly blessed their family. Uh, the story is, is marvelous, and, and all of the interesting twists and turns, how Moody took it up, turned it into a Bible study course, uh, how it, it has been used in so many remarkable ways in the salvation of untold thousands of people. So once again, uh, a businessman willing to stand up for the Lord Jesus, willing to be known, um, associated with, with the Savior, and clearly writing his testimony out, and uh, God picking it up and utilizing it, and in sowing the seed, God blessed it mightily. And so uh, I just want to encourage you, you know, there are a lot of people who say, I don't believe in gospel tracts, but then you meet people who've been saved through a gospel tract, and they really believe in them. And so it's a good thing to do. We need to be careful in the tracts we select. We need to be careful in how we hand them out. Don't leave a tract to a waitress without leaving a substantial tip. If you want her to read it, make friends of the world with the mammon of unrighteousness. Using money to soften the hearts of people so that they're more ready to read the gospel tract that you leave. But Christians should be leaving tracts wherever they go. We should be looking for opportunities to leave a message here, a message there. Who knows, as the scripture says, but that uh, what you sow in the morning or what you sow in the evening, it may be just what God uses in reaching poor souls. Listen to the scripture again. In the morning, sow your seed, and in the evening, do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. <laughs>